Hi there. Hello and welcome to the course Learn Gatsby, Build Your Own Blog. Hi, my name is Ashutosh and I am a full stack JavaScript developer. I have been using React for more than two years professionally. You can find more about me on my website. In this course, we will be covering topics like what is Gatsby, how it works, learning basic of Gatsby and then once we have the basic knowledge of Gatsby and how it works, we will implement a section. We build our own blog website. So what is Gatsby? Gatsby is a free and open source framework that uses React to build blazing fast website and apps. Let's see how Gatsby work. There are three main steps that comes into a process for building blazing fast websites and app using Gatsby. First, we need a data source from which we can fetch data and then we use Gatsby build tools, all the ecosystem with HTML, CSS, React and the power of GraphQL to build the website. The third step is to deploy our newly created website to a hosting service so that not only you but your friends and family can also watch it on the internet. If we dive a little deeper into the these three steps, you can see that we first have to choose a data source which can be either a CMS like Contentful or WordPress can simply be a markdown files where you can fetch the post or from any traditional APIs in the format of JSON, CSV, YAML and anything. Then we use HTML, CSS, React with the power of GraphQL provided by Gatsby to build the functionality. Once we are done and happy with our implementation, then we can use any number of uh, free service provider to host our web application. In this course, I will be using Netlify as the web host provider. Hope you enjoy learning while building your own blog. Hope to see you soon. Welcome back. In this lecture, we will cover how to set up the development environment for learning Gatsby. To start using Gatsby and to build Gatsby project, we need to first set up the development environment. For setting up the development environment, there are two requirements that should be fulfilled. First, we need to install Node.js in our machine. I will add the link to how to install Node.js in your environment in the description. Also, we need to add Git, the version control system. In my machine, I already have Node installed. With Node, it, there comes the Node package manager, npm. When you have npm, you need to install Gatsby CLI using npm install Gatsby CLI. I am using minus G flag to install it globally. As I already have Gatsby CLI installed, I am going to abort this step. To check whether we have Gatsby installed or not, you can type in Gatsby-V for version. To see all the available commands, type in Gatsby help and it will list all the available commands.
To create a new project using Gatsby CLI, we need to type in Gatsby new and the name of our project. In this case, we will be building a blog for Marvel collectors. After Gatsby has finished fetching all the requirements, you can cd into the folder and run Gatsby develop to start the development server. It will give you the address on which the local server is hosted. It's listening on localhost port 8000. I'm going to open a new browser and visit this URL. And here you go with the default starter guide and package of Gatsby. You can stop the server by pressing Ctrl C on Windows and Command C on Mac. If you wish to rerun the server, you just need to type in Gatsby develop again. Hey guys, welcome back to learn Gatsby. In this lecture, we will be learning how to get familiar with Gatsby file structure. In previous lecture, we, are, we have already set up a demo project. When you run command Gatsby new, the name of your project, Gatsby will use a template called starter guide to creating that project. That is why when you run Gatsby develop, you are able to see a web page even though you haven't written any code. If I run Gatsby develop again, and reload my browser, you will able to see this page. That is because Gatsby by default use this default starter package. If I open the project in a ID, we can look into the file structure. In this course, I will be using Visual Core because I really like it. To open the project in Visual Studio Code, you can use Code and the name of the folder. You can see on the right the file structure of the Gatsby project. It includes several folder and files. Folder name node module will have all the dependency needed for this project. Public is the directory where all the required asset and build files will be stored when we run Gatsby build command. All the source code reside in the source folder. If you open the folder, there will be several folder. In this case, there are three, one called pages, images, and components. In case of Gatsby framework, pages folder inside source has a special meaning. If you look at the file index.js or any such file inside pages, every file will export a React component. And whatever will be the name of the file inside pages folder will become a route in our website. So for example, you can see on the left hand side the content of this file index.js. It has a heading, hi people, a welcome message. And that is the UI you are seeing on website by default. If I navigate to the page two, which has a content called hi from the page second. If you open up, if you open up the file name page two, you will see this content.
if I modify the content of this page and save the file, you will be able to see the changes in real time. That is because hot reloading is implemented by default in Gatsby. So every change you make to the file will reflect without reloading the browser. To create a new page, you just need to create a file inside pages folder. Name it what you want to name it the route of the page. In this case, we're going to create a about page. In this new file, we have to export a React component. And whatever that React component display in UI will be displayed in that particular page. In this case, about. So I'm going to create a React component and export it. Now, if I change the URL to about, you will see a page called about. These are the exact content that we put in this file. You can observe that there is no way to navigate back to the previous page beside using the go back button on the browser. You can add the functionality programmatically using link. We will import link from Gatsby and use it in the component. Link is a React component that comes built in in Gatsby package. Link receives one prop called to, which will be the route of the page we want to move or navigate to when clicked on that link. If we look into the code, you can see there is a hyperlink back to home. If, and if we click on it, we are redirected to the home page. Generally, we put our components, the reusable parts in components directory. Other than these three folders, there are few files. We have our package file, which contain all the dependency that we need this for this project. React, React, DOM are core dependency for the Gatsby to work. There are several configuration files for Gatsby. The most interesting one is Gatsby config. This will have all the plugins that you use for this project. By default, Gatsby is already using few of them. For example, Gatsby plugin React Helmet for adding and setting metadata or header. Gatsby has a huge ecosystem for plugins. Uh, you can have a plugin for loading images, ha having page transitions, Google Analytics, and so on. We are going to learn more about Gatsby plugin in a future section. Gatsby config is a very important file. For example, it contains site metadata. If you look at closely at this page, you can see that there is a header for this website and it seems to be Gatsby default starter. We can change it inside the code. In file Gatsby config, if we change title property inside site metadata,
it will be changed. Some changes in Gatsby config file require a reload. For example, if you want to change any of the plugins, you need to rerun the server. That is it for this section. I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to add style in Gatsby. In this part, we are going to explore how we can add style in Gatsby. What are the options? Styling in Gatsby, there are a few ways. You can add global style using standard CSS file or you can use CSS module which is great feature to style your components. You can also use CSS in JS to style your React component. In this course, we will be using the first method adding global style to CSS file but if you are interested, you can find more about the other two methods. Let's continue our lecture with adding global style using CSS. To add that, we are going to use Tailwind CSS, which is a CSS framework to build rapid components using predefined utilities. To do that, we are going to add few dependencies to our package. Now we are going to add another Gatsby plugin called Post CSS, which will help us to process CSS framework like Tailwind CSS. When our dependency has been installed, Now we are going to add the plugin that we just installed, Gatsby plugin both CSS to our plugin file. To add it, we are going to open Gatsby config file. And at the very bottom, I am going to add Gatsby plugin. I am going to add Gatsby plugin both CSS. After create, adding that plugin, we need to create configuration for that plugin so that we can dictate it to include Tailwind CSS in the post CSS transpilation step. To do this, I am going to create a config file for post CSS. I have created a post CSS config file in the root directory. Inside post CSS config file, I have added Tailwind CSS as a plugin. Now that we have configured our post CSS config file, I am going to add Tailwind directives to our global CSS file. So I am going to open global CSS 
and at the top of the file I am going to add tailwind directives. So we have included tails, component and utils which will help us to use the basic util functionality of tailwind CSS. Now I'm going to restart the server. Now that our server is restarted, I'm going to revisit the page and everything seems to work like it was before. But now we can use Tailwind feature instead of defining our own styles. When I go back to our index page, now I can start using Tailwind classes to give style to our components. I will start by adding a background. I start by adding a background color and text color to our element. To make it a little bit better, I'm going to add the full height and full width. After doing few tweaks, our page is looking just better. In the next lecture, we will going to and that and this is how you apply style to Gatsby website using global style with standard CSS. We have just added Tailwind CSS so that we don't have to write our own styles and can use already built in stack. That is it for this lecture. As you already saw in the previous lecture that we have added style using global style sheet and tailwind CSS. In this lecture we are going to add some react component to add content in our page. So let's get started. Right here I have the previous example that we used in the lecture where we have a simple page containing a h2 element with welcome to learn Gatsby. This is a bare minimum web page. Um, the basic requirement for a web page to have a header and a footer. So I'm going to add a header and footer in this page. We will start with a basic footer and header which will contain the name of the website with some basic styles. React will throw an error if you try to return multiple elements from a component, you can only return a single element from a component. So I'm going to wrap all these individual children into a parent div. Everything works fine. And now we have our simple header and footer with travel shop as the name of our website. As they are, things are not looking very pretty. So I'm going to add some style to make it look bearable to eyes. After adding some basic styles, the site is looking a little better. If we look at the things that are as it is, then we have a simple page 
with a header and a footer. After adding some content to the page, which are just a placeholder for now, we have a simple and boring web page. There is a limitation to this page is that we have used header and footer directly into the page. I will show you what is the limitation in a moment. Let's say I have to create another page. So I go into pages folder and add a file called about.js. Inside that about file, I create a React component and export it so that the page can be rendered at slash about. If I load this page in the browser, you will see that they are just the minimum content. To add header and footer, I need to copy those element from the previous page to the about page. Copying code over is not a good practice because it will make the project hard to maintain because if we want to change something in header, we need to move or change it to every single page that we create and use that header. Same goes with the footer. So let's see how we can solve this problem in Gatsby. It would be great if we can extract this header and footer in a separate component and use that in the page we want. So I'm going to create a new function layout. The layout react component will contain header and footer and will render the content of the page between. I'm going to use children prop to render the content of the pages. You will get to know the consumption of this component in a little bit. By using child children as prop, you can compose different React components together in a nice way. After making some changes to style, we have created a layout component that we needed. Now let's use it in the above page. So I'm going to delete the header and footer and use layout component and pass the content of the following page as a children. Let's remove the duplicate styles. And now we have the page similar to what we have earlier. The only difference is that now we are using this layout component instead of defining header and footer directly. The nice thing about defining this layout component is that we can use it any page we want. And if we want to change something, we have to do it in one place, which is in the layout component itself. And all the pages will be updated automatically. I have removed this layout component from the page file itself and moved it into a reusable component folder within the file called layout. I have also changed the header and footer content to make it look better. Now that we have a layout component that we can use in many pages, let's take a look at the content of this layout component. We have a header and we have a footer. In footer, I have added some basic content that are needed in every footer. They are almost static. Now that look that we want to change the content of the about page, we don't need to update the footer in this file. All we want to use is the layout component. So I'm going to import the layout component and use in the about page. And when I visit about page in the browser, I can see the content of that page. 
One limitation now is that we don't have a way to navigate between the pages. If I want to go to about page, I have to type in the URL of that about page and then that's the only way we can navigate currently. It would be really nice that if we have a way to navigate between pages using the navigation header. Let's add a way so that we can navigate between pages using this header. So I'm going to the layout file and inside the layout file, there will be a component called header. This is a basic header file. I have added a link uh, and wrap the travel show, which is the name of our site in that link. A link is a React component in Gatsby, which is just like a anchor tag, but instead of navigating to a different website, it will help us navigate between our website. Now I'm going to add another link called about After changing some style, we have our about link in the page header. Currently about link is pointed to the home or index page. We want to point it to a different page. So I'm going to add a prop called to and pass the link of the page we want our site to navigate when we click on about. Once done, Clicking on about will lead us to about page and then we can click on the site header, the name of our website to go to the home page. And that's how we add navigation functionality between two pages. We use link from Gatsby to navigate between different pages. Adding layout component was a nice decision because if we want to change anything in header or footer, we would make that change in a single place called layout component and it will be applied to all the pages that use that layout component. Welcome back. In this lecture, we will see how to use GraphQL with Gatsby to get data into your components. Before adding GraphQL queries to your Gatsby website, let's take a look at what is Gra GraphQL. GraphQL was invented at Facebook to help product engineers pull data that they need into the components. GraphQL is a query language that is the QL part right after graph. If you are familiar with SQL, it works very similar in that way. Using a special syntax, you describe data that you want in your component and that data is given to you. Gatsby uses GraphQL to enable component to declare what data they want. GraphQL solves problem which exist with existing API structure like REST. The limitations are underfetching, overfetching and not having that much static power over the data fetching methods. In this lecture, we are going to see how you can use GraphQL query in your components to get data. Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to use GraphQL query to fetching data in our React component. I have previous example open up in front of me. As you can see that we have already used layout component. And if I open the layout component, you are going to see that we are using a header. Inside that header, we are using our site name. That is hard coded right now. I want it to fetch from our config file so that if we change the config, the site name will be changed automatically. I want it to fetch it from site metadata inside Gatsby config file. To do that, we are going to use two methods, GraphQL and use static query. We are importing them from Gatsby. 
Now inside our layout component, I am going to define the query, the GraphQL query we will be using to retrieve that data. So I use the function use static query and pass a GraphQL query into that function. To write in GraphQL query, you need to use keyword query and then the name of the query. This can be whatever you want to name it. I'm just naming it site title query because we are fetching the site title. After writing the query, you can use the data in your React component. Let me just log the data so that you can see what we are retrieving from GraphQL into Gatsby. If I open up the console and reload the page, you will see that we are logging out this site and then site we have a nested object site metadata which have a key title and the content of title is travel shop. Now we are going to remove this hard coded value and use the latest data that we have retrieved from GraphQL. After passing site title into header, I'm going to use the site title prop instead of this hard coded value. Now that we have make the site title dynamic using the query site title query and passing it the data that we want. We exactly define what data we need. I have added one another field called description because we have description defined in our Gatsby config file. If you look closely, the footer also contain hard coded value. So I'm going to add the description of our site into the footer just for the demonstration purposes. And that is how we get the description shown in the footer. There is no need of adding description, so I have removed it. This is our first GraphQL query. And we have used the probe passed into the feather and retrieve the data from site metadata in our config file. If I change it to something else, it has changed instantly. Let's move it back. Now I'm also going to replace this hard coded value in the footer to have our data that we just retrieved from GraphQL. So now the layout component is all in sync with the config file. If we make any change to the config file, the changes will be reflected in both header and footer using GraphQL query. That is it for this lecture. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we are going to talk about optimizing image with Gatsby image. Gatsby image is a plugin that you can use to speedily optimize image without the work. Gatsby image is a React component specially designed to work seamlessly with GraphQL queries. It combines the processing power of image that Gatsby provides and use it with loading technique to easily load the optimum image. Gatsby image uses Gatsby plugin chart to power its image transformation. There are few problems with images on the internet. Large unoptimized image drastically slow down your website. But creating optimized images for website has long process. You have to resize large images to the size you need. You have to generate multiple smaller images for smartphone, tablet, and desktop. You need to optimize it for the right compression and you have to effectively lazy load images for initial page load and save bandwidth. Doing all this requires a lot amount of work 
but using Gatsby image plugin, you can do it in matter of just minute. With Gatsby, we can make images way way better. The steps required to work with Gatsby image is first to import Gatsby image and use it in place of built-in image component. Then write a GraphQL query using one of the included GraphQL fragment which specify the field needed by Gatsby image. Gatsby GraphQL query create multiple thumbnail with optimized PNG and JPEG compression. The Gatsby image component automatically set up the blur up effect as well as lazy loading of images further down the screen. We need three plugins and packages for this to work. We need a package called Gatsby image, Gatsby transformer sharp and Gatsby plugin sharp. With the help of these plugins, we can start using Gatsby image in our project. Welcome back guys. In this lecture we are going to learn how to add content in the Gatsby so that we can build our blog. I have made few changes since our last update. The server is running and let's see what's the result. So I have changed the home page in such a way that it looks a little better. If we look back into the file editor, you can see that I have added some divs and an SVG element to give it some style. The home page is looking good now. The next step we are trying to do is to add data so that we can build our blog. For adding data, we will be using md file, markdown file. I have already created a folder called content and inside content I have created few files. At the top of the file, I have included data like title, date, path, description, and, and in the bottom, I have included a HTML. The HTML is the body of our post. I also have a similar file for Switzerland and one for New Zealand. Inside content, I already have a images folder which will be used in the post blogs. So now we are going to look how we can use this data in GraphQL and Gatsby. For that, we're going to need two packages. So I'm going to install them using npm. First, I install Gatsby transformer remark and then I install Gatsby source file system. These two packages will be needed in order to read those markdown files and use them in our components. Gatsby source file system will be used to import the files and Gatsby transformer remark will be used to transform those remark file into a usable format. Now that we have added the packages, let's see them. There they are. And now we are going to open the config file and add those packages into the config. I will first add Gatsby source file system, providing the name of the folder and the path of the folder. In this case, the name of the folder is content and I have added the path of that folder. Then I'm going to add Gatsby plugin transformer remark so that we can transform the markdown files. After saving them in config, I'm going to restart the server. Now that our server has been restarted, let's see those data in action.
If I visit the GraphQL editor for our website at localhost 8000 slash underscore underscore GraphQL, you will be able to see all the queries available. This is a nice place to test out the queries. On left panel, you can see all the queries that are available. All markdown query and file query are all important. So let's see all files. All files is supported by Gatsby source file system. You can see that we have total five file in our site. You can also get all the details for those files using the left panel and selecting the necessary details. As you select field on the left panel, the query will be written on middle and you can execute it to see the result. This query is generated by Gatsby source file system. The use of Gatsby transform plugin we will see in a little bit later. Markdown remark, all markdown remark, both queries are generated using this Gatsby transformer remark. This plugin gives us all markdown remark query. We can select the fields we want for this query and execute it. The content that we need is HTML and the front matter. So I'm going to select HTML and front matter. Inside front matter, you will be see all the details that we mentioned in that file, like title, path, description, image credit, date. You can also format date with these little helpers to make it more readable. Now that we have all the data that was on the files, we can start using them. Let me show you the file once again so that you can look what data is available in the query. Everything that is between this head part is available under for matter key. Excuse me, front matter key. We can also get the image path. Now that we have all the data, now we will start using those data to build dynamic pages. Welcome back. Now that we have the content written for blog and we have set up the data pipeline, how to bring data from files to Gatsby, it's time to create the blog pages. Let's have a look at the available data in GraphQL. As you can see that we have this query open up and we have all the data that we need, title, path, description, image credit. Let's clean it up. We only need path and title to start building the blog. Here we have path and the title. To build post pages dynamically, we are going to open up Gatsby node file. Inside this file, I'm going to export a async function, create pages. It will receive object as argument containing action and query. We are going to write the query using GraphQL. I have opened up the GraphQL editor. It is a great place to execute the query 
experiment with it and see what we want the exact result. Now that we have the query, we will check if the result written by the query has error. If there are any error, we will log them on the console. Otherwise, we are going to iterate over edges, extract data and use them. Here I am iterating over all the edges from all markdown remark. I will extract front matter from node and then log out front matter title and path just for demonstration purpose. If we restart the server, we will going to see the logs printed into the console. Now that we have the data, now we are going to use create page function from action that is provided by Gatsby. Create page function take an object as argument and inside that object you can pass path that will become the path of the newly created page. And a component that component will be used to create the page. As the component that we want so that we can create this page. I'm going to create a new component that will be used to create the page. Inside templates directory, I will create a file called blog post. If you don't have templates, then create a directory inside source folder. Inside that file, I'm going to export a React component that will contain all the markup needed to render the new page. Initially, I'm just going to use a static title just to demonstrate that we have created dynamic pages and later on we will fill it with the dynamic data. Now I'm going to import layout that is our reusable component so that our new blog pages will match to the rest of the theme. If you have already created reusable components, then you can compose them to make better pages. After creating the template, I'm going to import it in this file. We need to give the path name of the template file, which will be used to create the new pages. I'm going to require path and use the path module to define the component path. Now we will restart the server to see what is happening. After the server has restarted, we will go back and check the newly created page using the title, the path. I'm going to head over to localhost and then visit that URL for new blog. And you can see that new blog post has been created with path welcome to New Zealand. We have one another blog post welcome to Switzerland. You can also visit it. So as you can see, we have created these two new pages, although the content of these pages are pretty much static. If I visit any other URL, you will get to see a 404 page because those path does not exist. Now we are going to add some data in that template so that we can show exact content of the blog. 
in the blog post file i am going to import graphql because i will be using graphql queries to import the data i will once again use this helper tool provided by graphql editor to create the query in graphql queries you can also filter them so i am going to filter markdown remark query with path so we only get data for the path welcome to switzerland this will be useful when fetching the data for that particular blog as you will see in a moment after adding all the field that are needed for the blog i am going to copy this query and paste it inside our blog paste template the template file export a page query constant which will be used by graphql to generating data the data written by this page query will be passed on to the react component via data prop and you can extract nested fields from that data object as needed i am going to extract html from our markdown remark and use react dangerously set inner html function to set the html we generally don't use this dangerously set inner html function because it open some security flaws but because we are in control of html that is added we can use this function now i am going to add the title of our blog post i have made an error with the query of using slug i will rename it to path because the path is provided by graphql gatsby not slug let's rename slug to path because path is provided by gatsby to this page query in case of template now we rerun the server to see our newly created page after reloading the page you will be able to see the newly created content You can now see that the content of the blog has been updated and that is how you add dynamic data and create page dynamically in Gatsby. We use the file system to import our data which are written in markdown files then we transform them using Gatsby transformer remark plugin we extracted front matter data html and then use create page function provided by gatsby to create page dynamically that is it for this lecture in the following lecture we will add some images make this blog beautiful thank you for watching Welcome back. In this lecture we are going to add some style and image in our blog post. We have our blog content open up and the server is running. And this is how it currently looks. So I'm going to add some style to make it look better. I'm going to open up the blog post file and add some content and style here. I have added some style namely the background color giving it some margin paddings and added the date as well because we are getting date from front matter after adding style this is how it's looking much better already now i'm going to add the image for image we are going to use gatsby image which we have covered in previous lectures 
I am going to open up the GraphQL editor to write my query. There will be going to two steps. First, we need to get the relative path of that image from that blog query because every blog will contain an image. Here I am going to show you how we are getting the image. You can see that we have relative path in both our blog post. Now that we have looked at how we can get the relative path, let's see how we can fetch the image using this relative path. So I am going to query for file using this relative path as filter and extracting all the information we need to render the image. I am just using size and UID just to demonstrate it but in the code we will be using child image sharp which is a GraphQL fragment comes with Gatsby image. I am going to open up Gatsby node so that we can pass some content and context into our individual page. First I am going to edit the query to add image path. The one we selected here, I am going to copy and paste it. So get image path and relative path. After that, we are going to pass some information down to the page. Create page function, you can also pass context, which is an object. In this case, we just need the image path, which is coming from the query above. So I am going to extract image path, relative path from formatter. Now that we have image relative path passed to the page using context, we are going to head back our template and inside this page query, I am going to use that passed context. In page query, you can use multiple queries. We have currently only described one query, but it's your wish to define as many query as you want. If you want to make those query dynamic, you have to pass the dynamic content as context. In this case, the first query is for the markdown and the second query is for the image. In the second query, we are using the image relative path and filtering the path for that file. We are getting that file using this query and extracting child image sharp with fluid properties. We are using fluid properties here because we want an image which can wrap the entire viewport. We want to expand it as much. So I have given max width. Then I'm going to import image from Gatsby image, which is a React component that we have covered earlier in previous lecture. I am going to use this image component and pass the image data retrieved from the query into this image component. Because we have extracted fluid, I am going to use prop fluid in the image component. We need to extract it from file, child image sharp and fluid. After passing the prop, if you look at the editor, we have made a mistake. I have accidentally used dollar sign. I fixed the mistake and we are passing image relative path, getting it in the query, use it to filter the files and then use Gatsby image to render the image. With the help of Gatsby image, we are rendering a fluid image. Both of our blog posts have these beautiful images. Because we have added Gatsby image, now our blog posts have image. We also have image credit in the file, so I'm going to give the credit for these images. Adding a paragraph for image credit. The data for image credit is coming into front matter that we have saved in the files for both the blog post content. 
I'm going to add some style to this paragraph so make it a little better. After adding style, if we reload the page, we can see that we have an image for the blog post with an image credit. Both our blog posts are working. And now we have made a little bit better blog post using image style in Gatsby. We have used relative path and then pass that relative part back to the page using context and then using that context we have query for the file and use that image file with the help of Gatsby image. This is how you add an image for purposes of making blogs. This is it for this lecture. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to create a new blogs page which will contain listing of all the blogs we have in our website. I have server running with the current setup and I have created a new page inside pages directory called blogs. This page contains the basic structure. The blogs page contains a hero section describing what is this page for and then at the bottom we have some empty space where we will be filling the list of blogs. I have written basic markup and an SVG element just to create some layer. At the bottom of this file we are going to render the list of all blocks. For now, I am adding a placeholder. Let's open up the GraphQL editor. I have opened up the GraphQL editor. We are going to fetch all the blogs, so I am using all markdown remark query to get all the data that we need to render the list of blogs. I have copied the blog information and inside blogs file, I am going to create a query named page query and return it. Like every page with Gatsby, here comes a page query which is exported as a constant and inside that you can return the query. In this query we are getting all the marked and remarked files. The result of this page query will be returned as a prop to the main element which is blog page in this case. We can extract the data inside data prop all markdown remark. Now I'm going to destructure front matter from all markdown remark, destructuring edges first and then finally I will be iterating over those edges. I'm going to show console log just to know what is the content of edges. If I reload the page and open up the console panel, you will be able to see the content of those edges. Each edge contain node and each node contain front matter. Let's remove the log. Now I'm going to render this list inside this empty space. I'm going to create a unordered list. Inside that, I'm going to map over edges array, extracting node from edge and then extracting front matter from node. I'm going to return an ally and providing unique key to this ally. 
Providing key is very important when you are returning an array of elements. It is helpful for React to know which element is which so that it can only update what is updated. I have written the title of the blog and you can see it in action. Now I'm going to import block card, which is a component that I have already created to show the preview of a block. Block card has some props, body, image source, tag, title. Instead of this li, I'm going to return blog post providing all the props coming from front matter. We will pass the title, description, image, path, and all. Now that we have passed along all the data that is coming from front matter to blog post, let's see in action. So this is how the blog page is looking. We want to make sure that clicking read more button will open up the blog. Let's see if there is a functionality exists in blog cart so that we can navigate. In blog cart, we use link property to a button with the path. I'm going to add path to prop type so that it will show in suggestion. The path will be a string and is required. I'm going to remove this prefix. Now that path is added, I'm going to send the path of front matter to the block card because we are getting path from the query. Clicking on read mode is working. But in the navigation header, we don't have the link to blogs page. So I'm going to open up header file and add that blogs page link. Like we have used link from Gatsby to add about in the header, I'm going to use link again to add blogs page to the header giving it slash blogs because that is the name of our file in the pages directory if we reload we can see that blogs is now in the navigation header and we can navigate to blog section by clicking on it now we have fully functional blog we use page query to get all the blog listing. Then we destructure the data to get what we want. We iterate over all the edges and render blog card. In this way, we have a fully functional blog website with a listing of all blogs and we can navigate to each blog by clicking on read more card. I have used button inside blog card and a button is using navigate function from Gatsby to navigating to a URL. This URL is inside the routing of the website. So every page inside the website can be vis visited by navigate function. Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we are going to talk about how to deploy the site that we built travel blog to Netlify. Here I have the blog file open in front of me. So we have blogs page, we have about page, we have index page. If I run the server, and check out the result this is how it's looking as you already remember from previous lecture we have blogs page and clicking on a blog card lead to a blog post we will be using netlify as a service to deploy our website on the internet netlify is a free service to deploy and build website i'm going to log in with github 
and this is how the dashboard going to look when you logged in i already have one project i'm going to run npm run build in our terminal to build the project npm run build will run gatsby build command that will generate all the asset needed for this project and it will copy them in public folder so that we can use our site and deploy it without running the server after build process is done you can see that public directory is populated with all the files needed for this website i'm going to open up the folder for public and try to copy them into netlify let me copy the content of public and drag and drop the public folder into this area after the file has been uploaded they are being published and given a static name it has given a random name but we can also edit it but as you can see if we visit the url provided by netlify it is a secure one and you can check out the blog it is live and this is how simple it is to build and deploy a website using netlify we can also edit the domain name that is provided randomly i am going to edit the site name to a more suitable name as soon as you save this change you will be able to see the site on this new site name all the domains name provided by netlify are secure if you click on this plus icon in your browser the application the web app will going to install on your pc this is because it is a pwa app even though we didn't write any code for it because we have used a plugin in our code system let's be build this pwa for us you can use this website as a app on your pc let me open up the gatsby config file in gatsby config you can see there is a conf plugin gatsby plugin manifest with options to make a pwa it will add up a icon on your home which can directly lead that website whatever config that we have added background color theme and the name are used to generate that icon on the home screen you can also add custom domain in netlify and if you add custom domain you have to provide a ssl certificate so that https can be enabled you can also use git repository so that you will enable continuous deployment cd for your site so whenever you make a change it will redeploy automatically and you can also drag and drop the file directly to build a new site next what i'm going to do is to try to add a website from git this will be useful if you want to do continuous deployment which means whenever you change something it will redeploy itself so any changes that you make you have to push them into git repository and then the site will rebuild itself i'm going to push all the changes that i have made in this branch and then connect my github account after authorizing with github you can look all the repo that you have on github i am going to find the one we need in this lecture after choosing a repo you can also choose the branch i am i am going to choose lessons build command will be run as a build step and the directory you want to publish the change should be public in this case the command is gets be build and the directory is public this process will take some amount of time you can also check the logs once the build step is complete you will be prompted with that now you can check the website again now to demonstrate the continuous deployment i am going to make a change in the file and push it i am going to open up the index page 
and inside index page i'm going to add a little animation so that our home page will look a little better i have already installed a package called lotify loti is a library which will render after effect in the web so i'm going to import the animation and add animation using loti once i'm happy with the change i'm going to run the server to check the changes all look good now we have this animation i'm going to push these changes commit them and push them to a git repo and let netlify do its job of continuous deployment once the changes have been pushed i can visit the netlify dashboard to see the deployment we can see that there is a new log message add animation to index page which is the message of the commit that we just pushed and now it's building that change once the build is completed we can check out the new changes deployed on the website and now we have our latest changes the animation on the live website so this is how you push the changes to github and then netlify rebuild it and we can use netlify which is an awesome tool to deploy our website on the internet thanks for watching this is it for this lecture <laughs>